some great friends, Diana Harkey, Juan Hidalgo, and Chris Harris. Um, and, and together, we're, we're here standing up for the one thing that I, I think is extremely important that we agree with the president with as he sends and, and, and uh, directs troops to the border right now is that he's already sending nine engineering units with the first 5,000 troops that he's directed to the border. If that number goes, goes up to 15,000 troops, we might have 15 or 20 in engineering units. And I'm writing him a, uh, wrote him a letter that, that we're sending today that I think uh, does the most important thing that we can do with these military units on the border, and that's build the foundational border uh, road. With, with about 10 people and six vehicles, they can build about a quarter mile of foundational border road, which you see behind me. What, what makes the border wall actually work so well is the high speed road that sits in between the two walls because that enables the agents to get from one place to the other very quickly. That's what makes the border wall work. And if, if you have these engineering units and you have thousands of military on the border, the National Guard, the Reserve, the Seabees, the Marine Corps, and the active duty Army, they all have bulldozers, they all have graders, and right now they're doing make work projects in different uh, bases throughout the nation. That's how they train. They move, they move dirt from one place to the other because what they do is they go overseas to Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and they, they build all, all weather, all purpose roads on different bases overseas. They train doing that back here. What I want to see them do and what the president should direct them to do is build those roads on the border right now while, while they are mutually supported by active duty military, which are on their way to the border now. That's the most important thing that the president can do because building the high speed road is more than half the cost of building the actual border wall. Behind us, you have Smuggler's Gulch. About 80% of the border wall funding went to uh, cut and fill for the road. It was not the actual border fencing, but the road itself that cost that much money. We can save taxpayers tens of, of billions of dollars on equipment and man hours if you have the military right now, start building uh, the road while they're on the border. And that's what I'm asking the president to do. Number, number two, build detainee facilities. The uh, president called them 10 cities, but build nice detainee facilities so we stop doing catch and, and release with the people who claim asylum. Congress did not do its job. So if you come into this country and you stand at the actual port of entry and you claim a, asylum, we let you in and say, please come back in six months for your court date. 80% of the people don't come back at all. They disappear into the, the shadows of America. We don't know whether those are good guys or bad guys. There's no database in Honduras. There's no database in Guatemala or El Salvador to check them against. So we don't know. So do not release them. Have the military build detention facilities on the border where we keep the people there un until their cases can be adjudicated. And we ought to ship in judges and lawyers to those detention facilities so to do it as fast as possible so we can start sending people home who don't belong here. The reason this is so important, the, the reason that I called this press conference and we, we have supporters with us today that are, that are here that, that got wind of this, the reason it's so important is because with the military on its way to the border now, now is the time to strike and start building the border road. That is something that will save America billions of dollars. It'll save man hours, it'll save time, and we can get a jump start on the, the uh, uh, border wall. So with that, that, that being said, I'm, I'm here for official purposes. This is an, an a official letter from me as a congressman. It's, it's not a campaign ploy or stunt, and it's important because right now is the time to do it as the military is going to the border wall. That's what we need to get done. And I'd like to introduce a, a, a great lady who's running for Congress here. She's on the uh, uh, Board of Equalization, Miss Diane Harkey. Thank you, John. Thank you so much for coming. This is really an important issue. It's very near and dear to my heart. Um, I don't know how many of you read Kamala Harris's 2014 report on transnational gangs. Uh, it's, it's tremendously an eye-opener of what, what occurs at the border. And the only difference in that 2014 report is now is that we no longer have smugglers for marijuana. We have smugglers for opioids, uh, you know, fentanyl, heroin, those types of things. And it's coming across fast and furiously across this border. If we ever want to get a handle on the opioid crisis, we have to control our border because that is now the big, the big import. Human trafficking 
huge. I mean, that report will tell you it all, and it's all still valid. This is the number one entry is between uh, Mexico and the United States, and particularly California, for human trafficking, drug running, and money laundering. Uh, and it, nothing has changed. And with us legalizing marijuana, like I said, the only thing that's changed is now the drugs have changed. This is, uh, you know, it's, we cannot stop the crime, and we can't, we can't in a four-year period, uh, was given out where it shouldn't have been. And we accept they're on a temporary program, but that money does not quit coming. So, you know, if we're going to do, if we're having health care issues and, and, you know, people want to talk about Medicare for all, uh, this is going to be huge. We have to get a handle on the border and we have to get, we have to pass a solid immigration policy that works for what we need today. And uh, no scapegoating. Congress needs to do its job. And they had a bill. There were no Democrats supporting that bill, but they need to get together and do an, a, a complete reform because right now we have the Swiss cheese of, of statute because of all the case law. So we have to have we have to have some border security. It's just it's mandatory. So thank you very much for coming. Um, I really appreciate your interest, and uh, I look forward to seeing you. Hey, thanks, Diane. Uh, now let me introduce a gentleman who is is uh, running for Congress, a retired sergeant major in the uh, beloved United States Marine Corps. He knows about national security. He knows about this area. This is where he's from. This would be his district behind me. And uh, uh, the great sergeant major, Juan Hidalgo. Good morning. Thanks for coming out. Hey, this is vitally important right now. You know, we have to stop <clears throat> allowing the, the people on the left to dictate this conversation and say that it has everything to do with racism. It has nothing to do with racism. This has everything to do with national security. Nobody has a right just to enter our country. Nobody. There's a process. There's a process. And people always ask me because they try to catch us up and say, do you want a wall? I agree with our president. I want a real big wall, but I want a real big door too because we want people to come here legally I've never met one person against legal immigration, not one, because it's about taking care of the American people first. Diane said it right. There's people in Congress. Not everybody is a Duncan Hunter. We need more people in Congress that will fight for Americans. That's what I'm going to do in Congress. I like the guy I'm running against who doesn't care. He cares more about people on that side of the border. I care about you, the American people, your children, your grandchildren, and that's what we need to get back to. We need to take care of Americans and make sure Americans are safe again. Diane just gave you a long list of medical issues that are coming back into our country. Do you know the kids out here and the families that are uh, affected by these diseases right now? It's unheard of. When I'm in Congress, I'm going to work with Congressman Hunter. I'm going to work with Diane because she's going to be there too. We're all going to be working for the American people. So don't forget, it's time to vote our values and take care of the border because it's important to our country. And I do know something about secure, national security, and it's about protecting America. So God bless you, God bless America. Thank you for having us today. Hey, thanks, Juan. And uh, lastly here, Chris Harris, who's, who's been in law enforcement and uh, border security for longer than I've been alive, um, and who's probably forgotten more about border security than we'll ever know. And we've had tours from him, and what, what he shows us is what really happens on the border. The non-dog and pony shows the actual tours where, where, where we see uh, the down and, and dirty of how open the border is, how hard it is for the uh, Border Patrol agents and what they do, and how they're basically stopped by lawyers in, in the U.S. from doing their jobs. But, uh, but uh, the great Chris Harris, thanks for being here. Yeah, I was going to say nice things about him, but now I'm not going to. I, I got about 36 years in law enforcement, 20-some with the U.S. Border Patrol. Uh, my name is Chris Harrison with Local 1613 National Border Patrol Council. We represent the men and women who patrol this border to try to keep this country safe. One of the things that, it's not my quote, but it was it was a quote by a, a decent uh, agent, was we don't, we don't hate the people out there. We don't try to control the border because we hate those people. It's because we love the people in here. When you care about something, when you find intrinsic value in it, when it's something that is near and dear, you protect it. You either make a Fort Notch, you have a bank, you live in a gated community, you have a walled compound, whatever, you lock your doors at night. It's because you love the people inside, 
not that you hate the people outside. Every, every sovereign nation has a right to defend its borders and decide who comes in and how long. I do want to talk about the road, because right down here, when I came out here 21 years ago, that road wasn't there. It's a clay. When it rains, every agent had to pull off the border. We were catching a thousand people a night, just on night shift. My record is three, the same group three times in one night. Caught them, they went back, caught them, they went back, caught them, they went back. I'm sure the fourth time was a charm for them. That's unacceptable. Diane was talking about diseases. My men and women at the Imperial Beach Border Patrol Station are now, we're just in contact with typhus. They have to be checked for, for having typhus. That should not be an issue in this country, in a first world country. We are not a third world country. We should aspire to be a third world country. We should try to lift up countries to first world status, but we should lower ourselves to that. So I support the local supports, the men and women of the U.S. Border Patrol support anyone who supports the idea of securing the border. Understand this. Three years ago, even Democrats said they supported this. There's a difference between immigration reform, which is a serious discussion we have to have with the American people, and border security. No one, unless they have an agenda, should be against border security, protecting the people in this country. We know if in 9-11 there are bad people out there that want to do bad things to this country. Let's not have that happen again. So I support everyone that's standing here because they support us. They support securing the border. And as Juan said, there is no racism involved. My wife is from Mexico. It has nothing to do with it. I don't care if you're from Ireland. My family's from Ireland. I don't care if you're here illegally. I want to sack you up and get you out of here. Follow the law. We are a country of laws, not a country of man. That goes back all the way to the Magna Carta. You cannot have a decent democratic republic, a constitutional republic, without the rule of law. If you don't like the laws, change them in Congress. But you don't have the right to say, I don't like the law, we're not going to follow it. So I ask you to support the people that support us, the men and women of the U.S. Border Patrol, who risk their lives daily. This is named after someone, this already's point is named after somebody who was in a shootout who was shot. A Border Patrol agent. That's why it's called this. So I support and I ask you to support the men and women of the United States to support the people that support us in securing the borders. Thank you. Everybody, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Isn't it against how the House ethics violations to have a campaign rally? I'm not campaigning, also. nor is this a rally. But there's a campaign here. I, I can't your, I, I, I can't help what other people do. Congressman, your letter talked about political posturing. Is this not doing the same thing? No, this is not. No, not at all. We, we, what, what we wrote was an official letter to the uh, president that's being sent out right now that says simply build the foundational border road with the military. That's that's what this is about. And, and I think it, it's so important is why I call this. This is the one thing that you can do. Chris was on the, on the radio a little while ago and said the uh, first Marine Division is not going to hold hands across the border. You're not going to have U.S. military doing law enforcement activity on the border. They're going to be helping. What they can do is start putting in the infrastructure right now for zero cost because they're already paid for. The men and women that are in the active duty and reserve and National Guard, they're already being paid. The bulldozers are already bought by uh, taxpayer money. They can start doing that right now, and the president needs to get that message that, that this can be started right now, and his wall could be being uh, built right now as we speak with these military units being sent to the, uh, the border. This is, this is not about immigration. This is about building the first part of the wall that the wall is going to, going to sit on and that costs the most. This is The actual road costs more than, than the uh, wall itself. That's what this is about. Yes, Bruce. So I, I, and that was a good question, and, and I appreciate why Congressman Hunt is doing that. That primary fence is new. That started under a program with President Obama. But the original one was from his father, and that was done with engineers and reserves. Uh, and it costs very little to the U.S. government. So I pay taxes like all of you. I prefer to pay less taxes. Um, so if you can get the president to sign off on having the military do something they're already paid to do, I I'm all on board for that. Um, you know, I'm God bless capital, God bless companies that are being paid for it. But if we can start doing some of the stuff from behind that for free, I I'm all for that. Harris, is this smuggler's gold right behind you? Actually, it's not. I think the car system is spoke behind us, but it, just over three miles that way. Uh, but his point is the same. We built a berm through there. We built a secondary fence. 
I, I had Swedish TV there a while ago. They were filming. They said, do you actually need a secondary fence? And it was a rainy, foggy morning. And I said, hold that thought. Ah, there's a guy right there. He's stuck by that secondary fence. I got on the radio. They came down and made an arrest. If the secondary fence wasn't there, he would have gotten through. So it's it's so helpful. Infrastructure not the end all and be all, but it's very helpful. Just to be true. Congressman Hunter, Ian Freeman was NPC7. Can you respond to those critics who say that the ad your campaign had against the March on the Majority? No, we're not racist? we're not talking to campaign stuff. Right right now we have we have an army of migrants bearing down on, on the US from multiple third world countries. The uh, uh, president has has finally directed the military to the border and building the uh, foundational Border Road is the most important thing they can be doing besides assisting Border Patrol on, on, on their apprehensions. Do you have any thoughts on President Trump's comments about signing an executive order to end birthright citizenship? No, we'll, we'll uh, look at it. And, and, and if he has legal grounds, I'm, I'm absolutely interested in it. Absolutely. Congressman Hunter, is this just a slideshow to deflect from the indictment? No. No, this is about... Why are you here? Yeah. You don't even support the border. Congressman, do you think it's fiscally prudent for the president to deploy 15,000 troops to the U.S. border? Yeah, because they're already training. You're, you're already paying, paying the uh, U.S. military. You've already bought the vehicles, and you're, you're already paying. We, we the, the taxpayers, are already paying. That's why if you can build the border wall and, and the uh, uh, border road especially, it, it will almost cost nothing because you already have these engineering units training throughout the nation. They're already moving dirt, they're already building roads because they're training for what they're gonna do overseas on military bases, where they build all, all weather foundational roads and they also uh, put up fences and uh, walls. That's what the US military engineering units are trained to do. So have them do it right here. Congressman, what is the difference between this caravan and previous caravans? Why is this caravan raised to the national security level of uh, calling in the military? Why is this caravan that much more dangerous? The, the uh, uh, size. You now have multiple. You now have multiple caravans. You now have multiple caravans of mostly military age males coming at the border. You you, you don't know who is there. You you just because you can't prove that that there's a a, a terrorist organization infiltrated in these units doesn't mean you can't disprove that either. Meaning you could easily have terrorist elements in in these caravans. You don't know one why, way or the other. Would, you don't let would, anybody into your house would, without knowing who they are. Why would a trouble of walking thousands of miles with, with million children bathing in the rivers so that, to attack the So United they could States. get in the border? So they, so, so that they could get in the United States? Many of them are on trucks and have they're weapons. Walking. So they but have again, weapons. here's... Somebody's the, bringing supplies The big point is, the major point's this. The president has already directed troops. If you want to use those those military assets to the best of their ability, besides buttressing the U.S. Border Patrol and, and ICE, build the border wall starting with that foundational road. Get a jump start on it. Do it now. And you don't have to wait for Congress, Mr. President. You, you don't have to wait for Congress at all. The military is already being paid by the U.S. taxpayer. So have them start on this national security issue that has nothing to do with immigration. It has to do with securing the border and making sure that people come to the, the uh, uh, front door of the U.S. like Juan Hidalgo said. Congressman, why do you think that the entire Democrat Party has gone silent on the caravan, yet they support open borders? Yeah, th this is interesting, too, because Hillary Clinton voted for the border fencing. Hillary Clinton supported the uh, fence behind us. She voted for it. So I'm, I'm not sure what's changed in the Democrat Party where they want open borders and, and they don't mind this, this caravan of people who they don't know who is in it coming to the U.S. I am not sure. But you had, you had Hillary Clinton vote for this fence behind us. Congressman, the rhetoric in this country is very charged right now, both sides. I mean, we've even seen it here. Uh, is there anything you can do or say that could kind of bring Americans back together? I mean, it's getting, it's, I mean there's people getting hurt out there. We all stand for national security. No one's against securing America for Americans. And I think if you're on this side of the border, then you, you want what you ran from if you escaped to this country, if, if you've already been granted asylum, if you've immigrated here from another nation, you left something behind and you came here for a better place. So, so, so let's secure that better place here and make sure we don't bring ourselves down to the uh, level of, of crime and despotism 
of places that you left behind. That's what the border wall can uh, can do. That's what it can accomplish. And if you start building the border road, you got a huge, almost free jump start on the, on that border wall. Are you concerned people just dig tunnels under it, or is that sure. no? No. Why not? Yeah. Because we have we have seismic sensors, and, and, and Chris can speak to this more. Yeah. We we work every day at catching those guys. Go ahead, Chris. Again, he's so forgotten I, more that, about that, this. That's than a great we'll question. And, and the problem is, like where I work, there's a river. They can't tunnel under it. The other thing is, those tunnels are million-dollar tunnels. They're all for narcotics. When you see people going through them, that's the end of the tunnel's life. When they think they got burned, that's when they start putting. Those tunnels are made for narcotics. They're million-dollar tunnels. They can't even hope to get through under what comes above. So if you can seal the border above to the best of your ability, whatever they can put underground is not even going to be a tenth of what they put above. So you're ahead of the game there. It costs them millions of dollars to do these tunnels. And we do work with different partners, including the IDF and other people, uh, to, to find them. And we're fairly good at it. It's a cat and mouse game, but the fact is you can't build enough tunnels to put people underground that are coming above. So if we can secure with whatever means, infrastructure, manpower, technology, above ground, they'll never match it underground. Chairwoman Harkey, are you here in your official capacity as a Board of Equalization member? No, no. I'm, I, you're well, campaigning. I am and I'm not. I'm not writing a letter. Okay. I am here. I am here because uh, this is a huge issue for me. Okay. And it's one of the reasons I am running for Congress. Okay. And I'm, you know, I could be here in my official capacity if you'd like me to be. Okay. Thank you. Congressman, <laughs> on, on immigration, on the border wall, I think the question that critics have is, with the caravan still so far away. And this last minute push with troops and to call press conferences like this, that's why they say this looks like a political stunt. Is there any validity to that? No, the, the, uh, and, uh, President Trump has already ordered troops to the border. Initially 5,000. That had nine engineering units in that 5,000. Okay? Um, if you double that or, or even triple that uh, number, you're, you're looking at 15 or 20 engineering units coming to the border that can start work on the uh, border road right now. So, for whatever reason that the president ordered this now, which is needed, I think, that you, you can never have too much support for the uh, Border Patrol on, on the border, especially when you lack a border wall, you, you, you need more and more people to guard it. But now that he's done that, I, I think the most important way that we can use those engineering assets is start building the border wall by building the foundational border road, which is the high-speed access for all the Border Patrol agents on, on the border. In terms of the question of a political stunt, uh, do you have any information about who organized the caravan? The president has suggested it maybe no, I don't by, know. by groups that wanted to bring it here. No idea. On the other side of the issue? No idea. I do have one comment. The research that I pointed out to you was from it was from an official capacity. You know, we were uh, considering we did we did legalize marijuana and the state board of equalization was high, trying to figure out how we tax something that can't be banked. Or, or recorded, and so you got into a lot of details as to where the real problems were, that where it was coming from, where which cartels were involved, and how you could possibly thwart that effort and make it put things above board without having the federal government on board for the banking issue. So all of that data I gave you from Kamala Harris's report, Transnational Gang, is all legitimate and has been verified. It's not disputable. This stuff is. This would be a huge issue for anyone with children because opioids are what's coming across now. It is not marijuana anymore. Uh, do you uh, support the uh, zero tolerance policy for now in the days uh, of separating families at the border? Or if you don't, uh, why not? Yeah, I, I think we ought to build more detention facilities and not release asylum seekers at all. And if that means keeping the families together in these detention facilities, that's what we need to do. So we, we ought to, so we, we ought to keep the people here that are asking for asylum and not release them into the interior of the country to disappear. Chris has, has, has great stats on this. Over 80% of the people who ask for asylum and are asked to come back to have their uh, uh, cases heard disappear into America, never to be heard from again. Um, keep them in detention facilities on the border and adjudicate their cases as fast as possible so we can send them home as a family as fast as possible. Was it a mistake to to initiate this uh, separation policy? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, 
I think you've had such a big influx and, and the uh, uh, president was caught off guard and was trying to do everything that he could to discourage people from coming here illegally. Did it work? And then he changed his mind. Did it work? I don't know. We didn't give a talk. And, and no, um, we actually know right, right now that um, immigration to the U.S., illegal immigration to the U.S. is up over last fiscal year at this point in time in this fiscal year. When you speak of a border road between the border, is that in between these two fences? It's gonna be in between the two fences, but the main road, because you didn't have that, the other fence, so the main road is, is like this one here. The this cement one, you want one of those in the middle? The gravel road. Yeah, okay. Congressman, your letter uh, refers to the caravan as an army of migrants. Yes. What do you mean by that? I mean, it's an army of migrants. What, what, army what weapons are they carrying? What dangers are they carrying? We don't know. Don't we don't know, know what the, the point is. The, the, the point is, you is don't know who they are. So why would you let people? Why would you let people come into your house when you don't know who they are? No one does that. None of you asking me questions would ever do that. None of the people watching this would ever do that. You don't let people into your house with, without knowing who are they are, the what their intentions and are, and, and what they have with them. Are you saying the military intelligence of this country can't determine whether it's an armed uh, caravan? Yeah, you can't tell whether you have you have, you have uh, criminals or gangsters. And yeah. El Salvador and Guatemala there's, don't there's have a database like we do, where you can check weapons. people out to see yeah, if exactly. if they're law-abiding citizens of their own countries. Congressman, uh, there were some incidents where uh, people were throwing Molotov cocktails and shooting at Mexican police officers. But is our military really going to be confronting people with with small weapons uh, like that? With the no, I think they're going to be supporting border patrol because we don't want to put the, the uh, military in a, a uh, position where they can't act. And, and uh, Chris can probably talk to better on how they literally support Border Patrol on the border. But again, the best thing that they can do is start building infrastructure and, and be mutually supportive of each other. You're going to have active duty units, you're going to have reserve units, and like I said, these engineering units, having them build the infrastructure is, is the best use that we can use for them and then have them start building detention facilities so we don't release one person that we've caught who's asked for asylum. We don't release one interior in, into the interior of the United States. That takes money too. And, and what this Congress needs to do is pass money for this or the president needs to declare this a national emergency and have these detention centers built using DOD money if that's what he has to do. Congressman, in 2014, you said that the Border Patrol fought 10 ISIS members, but that was proven false. Is this continued fear mongering by your campaign? No. And this is not a, a, a campaign deal. You should tell that to the people to your left. You said like three times that it's not a campaign. Anyway, so, hey, thank you, everybody. Um, I, this, this is important, again, for one major reason. The, the president has already directed troops. That is a done deal. That is going to happen. So if that's going to happen, what the president needs to direct them to do is start building the, the foundational high-speed road that the border wall is going to sit on. That is something that, that they can do right now. They can do it immediately. That will automatically make it easier to intercept illegal aliens coming across the border while they mutually support the Border Patrol um, as they get down to the, the, uh, the border and await this army of migrants coming from South and Central America. Congressman, you've got 10 years to do this going now. We've been working it. Uh, President Obama was an open border kind of guy. Congressman, you all have spoken about how this is about national security, and a few of you have even mentioned uh, preventing terrorism. Uh, I'm curious, though, considering the majority of domestic terrorism in the U.S. is conducted by far right-wing extremists, what would you do to address that? That's that's baloney. That's a dumb question. So, so wait, so wait, so revealed, for instance. Okay, so, uh, so that's it, folks. Uh, thank you very much for being here. What we want to do is keep America secure, and one way we can do that is, is by building the infrastructure with the U.S. military that the president has already directed to the border. Thank you.